Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on fronosphoto.com. Put your name, email address in it, hit send it. I'm gonna send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. And this is a review of the Nikon 200 to, wait a second, this is actually a 180 to 600, it's a 5.6 to 6.3. So Nikon kind of lied to everybody. They put 200 to 600 on the roadmap and they hit us with a 180 to 600, which is kind of interesting because if you remember, the Nikon roadmap said 200 to 600 and this so happens to be a surprise. Now what's funny is I only had a couple of days to use this and Nikon is as always worried that I'll be seen on TV when I take it to the Phillies game. They had tape all over the lens. I didn't know that it was a 180 to 600 until I looked at the lens hood and I saw 180 and I was like, 180? Where's that coming from? Nonetheless, this is basically replacing the 200 to 500 F mount lens that was a straight 5.6. This being a 5.6 to 6.3, is that that big of a deal? And the answer is no. For a variable aperture lens, that is a small variable that's going on. That's about a third of a stop. It's not that big of a deal. But like I said, I only had a few days to test this out. I took it out to the Philadelphia Zoo, where I do my normal rounds of photographing the gorilla, the flamingos, and the eagle, because this is basically a wildlife style lens that's gonna give you big reach for not a lot of money, and we'll get to that by the end of this video. I also took it out to the Philadelphia Phillies game because having a 180 to 600 millimeter zoom is pretty versatile when you're trying to capture sports, but does that 5.6 to 6.3 make the background not look that good? We'll see when we get into the images. But let's take a look at the outside of the lens. This is a pretty big lens. Now, the 200 to 500 5.6 was an external zoom lens. So as you turned the zoom ring, you were zooming all the way out. When I turn the zoom ring here, it's all zooming internal. Now I do have the lens hood on, which does make it look a little bigger, but I do recommend that if you are shooting photos, you probably should have the lens hood on at all times. That is one of my biggest recommendations ever. Now I just talked about going from 180 to 600. This is not that big of a throw. What I mean by that is it, from throw is how long does it take you to twist from one area to the other? Kind of like Chubby Checker going, you know, doing, doing the twist, which was in Concha Hawken in Philadelphia. I, I knew that's where Chubby Checker is, but it's about 70 degrees. So that is not that long of a throw, which is very good. I say that because Canon has this 100 to 500 and the throw is fairly long. You gotta twist quite a bit to get from 100 to 500. Now Sony has a 200 to 600 millimeter zoom as well. And their throw is one of the shortest throws that I've ever felt going from 200 to 600. Not that much further off from this. So Nikon did a good job with that. It is a nice design. It feels nice in the hands, but is it hand holdable? I say that because you have a removable tripod collar right here for people that need to put it on a monopod. In terms of weight, you are at 4.72 pounds or 2,140 grams, which is lighter than the 200 to 500 F mount that Nikon had. Even holding it like this right now, and today was leg day, hashtag leg day, it wasn't even arm day, and this does get heavy. Oh yeah, I, I should also mention that I used the Nikon Z9 this is what I chose to take out to test it on because, well, it has a bigger battery, which means more power and the built-in grip for going vertical. And I don't have a grip right here for the Z8, but as you know, they are basically the same exact cameras, some minor tweaks based on firmware, but that is about it. So when I was at the zoo, I handheld it, but it definitely does get tired. I found myself holding it like this when I was walking quite a bit because it just does get pretty heavy. Now, when I shot sports, I was on a monopod because it was much easier. It's a longer game. You're not gonna handhold it for that long. So if you're out in the wilderness and you're walking around, maybe you'll use a monopod. If you're just gonna shoot here and there and then put the camera down and the lens down a little bit, you may wanna try to handhold it, but that's up to you. And I think at just under five pounds, it's still a pretty heavy lens for most people. Now, in terms of filter thread, you have a 95 millimeter filter thread, 95 millimeter lens cap, 
cap right here. You've got the lens hood. When you're not using it, it bayonets back here. You also have four programmable buttons around the lens for whatever you would like that to do. You also have this custom control ring, which doubles as your manual focus. Uh, when I put it on the camera, it was manual focus. It, it's what it activated, which I actually don't like because when you touch it, it switches into manual when you do that. And then you have to reactivate by pressing the shutter halfway down to get it to re-engage for your continuous autofocus. In terms of hand holdability, you get five and a half stops of VR when you pair it with either of these cameras. Now, of course, this is a Z-mount lens, so you could put it on any of the Z-mount cameras. And we all know how the autofocus is on those older Nikons, but on the Z8 and the Z9, you're gonna have a much better time getting stuff in focus because those focusing systems are pretty good. Now, where do you go from 5.6 to 6.3? Well, at 300 millimeters, you go to F6. At 500 millimeters, you find yourself at 6.3, which is a little different than your 200 to 500, which is 5.6 all the way through. But like I said, it's a third of a stop and you're not really going to run into much of an issue because it's not that far off. And especially if you're shooting raw, you can just bring it back. It's not a big difference for a variable aperture lens. So it's nice to have 180 to 600. Let me show you a quick example of 180 to 600. This is an eagle. It's a bald eagle at the Philadelphia Zoo. I always go there to photograph the eagles and they were screaming. They wanted to be fed. And that's probably why they were waiting near the fence. This is your 180, this is your 600. This is tack sharp. It is gorgeous. Now, of course, the bird isn't in flight and it's not moving. That's something that you'll have to do if you're gonna go out into nature. I didn't wanna go out into nature. I wanted to go to the zoo because it's easy and I can get nice samples just like this for you to look at. Oh, and by the way, this was one click to Skittles and it looks absolutely fantastic. Let me jump in here real quick because I wanna show you this photo taken with the Z9 and edited with Fro Pack 3, starting with Fifth Element, followed by Almost Famous, Canadian Tuxedo, Capone, Eckert, King Contrast, Mentos, November Rain, Prestige Worldwide, and Zoolander. But check this out with one click. We've got Skittles from Fro Pack 1, and this photo with the 180 to 600. Let's bang it out with some Skittles as well and go boom. Look how amazing that looks in just one click. So look, if you want to give yourself a great starting point, speed up your raw workflow, or you're just tired of other people's presets not working, well, we created 15 custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they are still on sale. Or if you want to get the triple play bundle that includes Skittles from Fropack 1, you can save even more. Now, let's get back to the video. I always start with the gorilla. I like to go to the gorillas, and there so happened to be one out there at the time, and they were only out there for about five minutes before they went back in to sit in the air conditioning because, well, they have air conditioning at the zoo for the gorillas, which they don't actually have in the wild. But the one thing that I noticed here when I was trying to focus, and you can see with the EVF footage, is that it found ear. It went to ear AF, not animal IAF. I did turn on animal IAF, but let me tell you, this isn't the only camera system that does it. The Sony's gonna do it, the Canon's gonna do it, because it's looking for a difference in contrast. And what you see is that it finds the ear because, well, that's brighter than the eyes, which are in, set back a little bit with the gorillas. So that's not a Nikon issue. That's something that happens with all of the systems. So it handled everything fairly well. This is at 600 millimeters as well. But what if you want more? Can you put teleconverters on to this lens? And the answer is, Yes, you can put a 1.4 on there. You can put a 2X on there. Now what you're gonna get with the 1.4 converter is an 840 millimeter lens at F9. Now with a 2X converter, you're going out to 1200 millimeters at F13. And I do not recommend that you waste money on teleconverters to put on this lens. Now we did a great video, which was a side-by-side -side comparison showing you with, with a teleconverter and without a teleconverter, but just cropped in. Personally, I don't like to crop my images, but 
I rather see you get a sharper, better image from cropping than put a teleconverter on your camera, lose out on your aperture and your f-stops, and end up having a higher ISO, and then images that are not as sharp. We've shown it, we see it in the video, you can check it out. You have a Z8, you have a Z9, I did it backwards, because a Z8's here and a Z9 is here, you have these cameras that have 45 megapixels. I rather see you crop after the fact than worry about doing it with a teleconverter because the quality is going to be better. Now in terms of close focus, you can get within 7.9 feet uh, to get your minimum close focus if you're gonna try to be really close to something to get the shot. You also have nine blades for your aperture. Now, I always walk over to the Flamingos because, well, they're beautiful. They have a nice, vibrant color, and that's why I like to capture them. This one is at 600 millimeters as well. I love the fact that we have the reflection of another Flamingo behind it. The water always looks like it ghosts away, and it almost looks like a painting. That looks awesome, as well as the drop of water dropping from the bill of this Flamingo. Then I continued, and I wanted to shoot super tight. I wanted to get that eye in focus as this flamingo was walking because look how awesome the water looks behind it. We zoom in on the eye and this one is absolutely tack sharp. But I will tell you that there are times with this system that you do end up with, if you do a burst of shots, that a couple are gonna be, they, they might be close to in focus, but they're not perfectly tack sharp, whereas this one is absolutely tack sharp. And I think a lot of you guys who have the Nikon system have seen exactly what I'm talking about, where when you zoom in, you're like, I can't tell. And then you look at one that is absolutely tack and you're like, that is absolutely tack. So sometimes it's gonna be hit and miss with the system. Now that brings up something interesting here because Nikon also has this 100 to 400 millimeter lens. Now this is considered an S line. This also has different type of motors. The 180 to 600 has the STM motors. This has two motors and we believe they're the magnetic type that go back and forth, meaning this should focus slightly faster. But the question is, is, why would you spend like $2,700 on a lens like this when this one is $1,699? You get more bang for your buck, you get more reach, but why is this an S and this isn't an S is still beyond me and I'm not sure why Nikon did away with the gold ring. Next, we went out to the Philadelphia Phillies. They were playing the Los Angeles Dodgers. I love going out to the games to get images because when the coach is on the bench pre-game, that's a good opportunity for me to see them getting interviewed and also get some good shots. This is what your 180 looks like. We can zoom in, looks nice and sharp, it's fine. The colors look good. You get great stuff off the Z9, especially when you shoot raw. Next, I banged into 600 millimeters just to get the coach, and it looks fine. Colors look good. Clarity looks fine. Just know that you're going to get 600 millimeters at f6.3. This looks really good. Now, I like to shoot from the third base dugout side when I'm at the Phillies game because it gives me a nice clean shot for those left-handers up at bat. Now, right here, this is Freddie Friedman. This is at 600 millimeters, which means you're at 6.3. Now, this is an image that I did with a 600 millimeter lens at f4, just so that you can see a slight difference in the background. Now, the next shot is Freddie Freeman, where I did horizontal. So you can see me switch from vertical to horizontal, and we're at 400 millimeters. Now, the thing is, most people buying this lens are not going to spend the money to get a 402.8. You're not going to spend the money to get a 600 f4, because honestly, you don't need it. To have a $1,700 lens, lens that allows you to get the birds, that allows you to shoot sports, that allows you to do the things that you want to do with a huge zoom range of 180 to 600 is really all you need. There are always going to be trade-offs. That's just the nature of the beast. Like right here with Bryce Harper up to bat, I like to go a little wider to get the stands in the background so that if he hits an awesome shot like this one from the World Series where he hit a home run and you can see everybody going nuts in the stands, that was at 200 millimeters at F2. 2.8. There's not terribly too much of a difference here at f5.6, even though it looks very amateurish to have everything in focus in the background when you're trying to do this. This just shows you what you're capable of getting when you're at 180 millimeters. Let me jump in here real quick and say, are you subscribed to my YouTube channel? Well, if not, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the reviews that we do. There's a ton of old videos. We're looking at 3,500 plus videos over 
for a 13-year period, so there's a lot of free, informative, and educational content for you to check out. And don't forget, when you watch my content, give it a thumbs up. There's another position I like sitting at the Phillies game, and that's inside third base, which is close to home plate. Now, generally speaking, if you don't have a 28 to 70 or a 70 to 200, it's gonna be more difficult to photograph from that area. But having that 180, we're able to get a shot like this of a player sliding across home plate. Would I like to have been slightly wider? Would I like the ball to have been there? By the time the ball got into the frame, the guy had already slid through the entire frame. So 180 isn't exactly the isn't wide enough for this, but it got the job done here because I have the whole player sliding head first, but I would like to see a little more context like the ball coming in, but that's just the nature of what we had here. And then finally, Bryce Harper batting, about to hit a ball. He did not hit a home run here. They got shut out 9 nothing in this game. He actually fouled this one off, but 180 from this angle looks absolutely fantastic. So having the 180 to 600 was very good. To have 5-6 to 6-3 really wasn't that big of a deal because it's only a third of a stop. But there are two more tests that are extremely important. That's the sniff test as well as the wind tunnel test. Let's see how it sniffs. Oh yeah. Smells like the chalk line down first base. Don't snort it. You don't want to do that like Michael Irvin did and then he went to jail. He was a... Uh, he didn't actually go to jail, but he was snorting the line. Never snort the line. Do not snort the line. Wind tunnel test. I'm not even going to, well, all right, we'll stand it up. Got to be very careful here, because if I blow this over, uh, Nikon's going to knock on the door. <sighs> well, that's a brick. That absolutely passes the wind tunnel test because it stops the wind in its tracks. So as I said earlier, Nikon has a 100 to 400. Does this render that useless? That's a 4.5 to 5.6. Would you rather have more bang for your buck or something that is a little more compact? That's for you to obviously decide, but if you're a nature wildlife photographer, this is gonna be the lens that you wanna look at. Now at 6.3, you do have to be aware that in lower light situations, you're gonna have to bump your ISO up higher, which is gonna cause a little bit of extra noise and a little bit of extra grain, and of course, a loss of dynamic range. So you're gonna have less poppy colors. Keep that in mind if you're going to try to use this indoors or in low light situations. That's just the nature of the beast. Now Sony has a 200 to 600 that's $2,000. This is $1,700 right off the get go. If you're someone who has a Z8, a Z9, you do wildlife photos, go order this lens. There's a link down below. It's an affiliate link that helps us out but I think you should go purchase this if you've been waiting because there's nothing to worry about. This is gonna get the job done. 180 was a nice little surprise. The 5.6 to 6.3, not a big deal. They did a really nice job making this lens, so nice job, Nikon. I think they're gonna sell a ton of these. So that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Jared, PolandFronosPhoto.com. See ya.